Welcome to Check Your Fly. I'm Dave Sanford and this is Rich Matthews. Uh, we're going down the Warren River today and we're going to check it out. Wind finally laid down out of the east. We had some high cloudiness. That sometimes is uh, better for us uh, because we'll catch more fish on a cloudy day. Well, here comes the sun, but we're enjoying it anyways after three days of rain. Absolutely. The water's pretty dark. Uh, because it's a lot of fresh water mixed in with it, turned up all the rivers, and this is the Warren River that we're coming out of here. The Palmer and the Runnins River attached to this up at the, the other end where the estuaries are, run into the freshwater rivers. So hopefully we'll uh, get some stripers today. What do you think we're gonna use for a fly today, Rich? Chartreuse deceiver or chartreuse clouser? You said right. it's a little cloudy, so I think we're gonna go with the chartreuse and see Beautiful. what happens. All right, well, let's hold on. We're going to motor up here and uh, zip out and probably head over to Gatsby. I heard there's some pretty good fishing over there. All right, sounds good. Well, we're on the backside of Gatsby here, and they call this uh, Oxapatuxet Cove here. Um, I'm fishing an olive clouser. Got a Type 3 line on, sinking line. I got a probably 10 to 12 foot uh, leader here. Starts out at uh, 30 pound, break it down into 20 pound, down into um, 15, and then down into 12 pound, and then I have uh, a fluorocarbon on at the end there. Beautiful morning here. Sometimes we can come in this back cove here and you see the fish rising up to the top, eating off the top of the surface. So you just have to look around and see if you can see any boils on the top of the surface and you know, just drift around here and wait till you run into the fish. Tide just turned a little while ago. So wait for this tide to come back up. Water's a little bit dirty because it's been raining out, but I kinda prefer the water a little bit cloudier than clear. The fish aren't so spooky that way. Then you just take it in here and just strip it back in here. Three to four footers. Some people strip a little bit lighter. Some people stick the rod up underneath their arm, do a double ball, strip like this. Whatever way you feel comfortable in doing it, it's, it's fine, you know? Alternate your stripping a little bit slower, a little bit faster. Always check your your fly, make sure it's going through the way, through the water, the right way. Sometimes your eyes can get tilted a little bit. Oh, there we go. Look at that, right here at the boat. Now here it comes again. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. See, you never know that there's no fish showing up the top here at all. Look, he's racing right up top there. Just a little fish. We'll take him right in the side here. Sometimes if you get a bigger fish, you may want to put him back onto the reel, but... Bring him over on the side of the boat here. Oh, yeah. And the nice thing about being up on the decks like this, on this, uh... 18.6 cool logic here is that you get to see down into the water a little bit and a lot of times you'll see another fish following him. Oh, we just broke him off. All right, that's all right. So we call it tag and release. The hook's still there, everything's still there. Let's go get another one. I like it like that. You don't even have to get your hands all dirty. Oh, let me introduce Kels. Elsa's here fishing with us today. She's the so-called captain of the day. I'm going to do the boat handling for us when we move the boat around. Boiled up in front here. <clears throat> A lot of little fish in here today. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good sized fish. This Rich, look at him. They're coming up over here again. Oh yeah. As soon as we get this fish in the boat, yeah. Well, if Kels move us up there. He's a little bit fatter, this one. Just put your rod down over to the side there. 
and I love it. Stick him, stick your thumb right in his mouth, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a little fatty this way. See, and you get this olive fish. Good looking. Look at that. I love when they stick their fins up like that. Uh, a couple of sea lice on them. See the sea lice back there, guys? Alright, we'll just let him go. Oh, he's a wild man. There he is. There you go, Rich. All right. Oh, oh look at him scream. He's screaming. Come on, little fishy. All right, cool. Huh? Nice little fish. Oh, yeah. Look at that fish. There's stripes and everything. Splash! Nice job, Rich. There we go. So, this part of the plant now, it looks like we're aerating it. I guess we have one that's standing by. Uh, right, Ooh, this is, right, this is actually one of the basins which is on standby as the float of the plant uh, gets higher during a rainstorm, this can be uh, brought online. Uh, you can see the big turbine here. Basically that, that turns and it adds oxygen to the wastewater and then bacteria grow. Basically these are bacteria farms and it's through that process that the bacteria consume uh, nutrients, they, they, they grow and then flock together and then they can fall out of solution. So we can, we can start off with a wastewater that has a very high biological oxygen demand and a lot of particles and we can end up with something that is going out into the bay that is very clear with a limited like amount of uh, particles. I like that, uh, farming wastewater, that's great. That's right, that's now really. This, one, this one's spinning and it's uh, foaming and creating more air into the water here. Right, to basically, to uh, have the bacteria grow, the only thing that we have to add is the oxygen. Oh, and that's great. what is happening here, through churning it up, just like you would in your fish tank back at home. You would have a diffuser stone that would be adding oxygen. This is our way of doing it here. Right. And as you said before, there's people here 24 7 and they're monitoring uh, this tank right now upstairs, I guess. And when they feel it reaches a, a high enough oxidization uh, level, uh, did I say it right? Uh, right. Then they'll release it into the next tank. Right. Uh, basically, it is uh, flowing through these tanks. It has a certain retention time for the bacteria to grow and then it will then be passed on to the final clarifiers. All right, can we go take a look at those? All right, sure. All right. Dave, here we are. Now we're at the secondary clarifiers. These are the final clarifiers. Uh, the only other treatment that will be done on the wastewater after it leaves these basins will be disinfection by chlorine and then dechlorination to make sure that we've taken out all of the chlorine before it goes into the bay. But these basins, uh, slow the water down and let everything settle out as solution. Okay, seems like it, the flow is going a lot slower and I guess this uh, intake here is coming in from the aerating tank here which is a lot darker and uh, you can see the sediment actually in the top of the water right. and it filters out into this tank and then I guess that's a skimmer and right. it skims off the top? Yeah, that's exactly right. This is a, this is a skimmer. It would take off any of the uh, floating uh, material and then down at the bottom of this tank, which you can't see, the solids are being pumped out. <laughs> I can see from where it came into the plant to being gray to the other side of this here, it's starting to gain a color now. It's starting to get that green, clear. Um, you can see the particles starting to drop through here and then the outside ring where I guess it goes from here into another plant. Right, that's it. From here, there's seven of these basins here at the Buckland Point facility 
and the flow from each goes to the uh, chlorine contact tank where, where bleach or sodium hypochlorite would be added to the wastewater to kill off any harmful bacteria or viruses. Okay, are you ready to go to the next tank? All right, sure, let's sure. go. Sounds great. This is the point that chlorine is being added to the wastewater. Uh, it's in the form of bleach, sodium hypochlorite, the same thing that you would maybe use to wash your clothes. Um, it okay. then, uh, the wastewater is then held in the contact tank for about 15 minutes. We then add sodium bisulfite to consume or neutralize any remaining chlorine and then the water either flows to the bay or is uh, pumped out to the bay. Super. Now, what, how long, if water was coming in here, or wastewater was coming in here at 10 o'clock in the morning, how long does it take to treat that water and get it back out into the bay? Right, at the uh, normal flow, which would be about uh, 25 million gallons per day, that, that retention time in the, in the plant would be about 17 hours. So if it came in at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, it would then be, uh, let's see. <laughs> My math is not that okay. great. So. It would be 17 hours later that it would be flowing out into the bay. Are we gonna take a look at this and see what uh, kind of Sure, this is there? actually very similar to the portable units that you saw up uh, in the, the other building that we right. use in industry. This is just one that is a, a permanently mounted one here. Um, it has a refrigeration unit. We always have to start off with preserving the sample by keeping it at four degrees centigrade. Um, it has we, insulation, I guess, around here? Right. Uh, during, during the winter, we wanted to prevent any uh, freezing of the, of the sample. And there's actually a, a Teflon suction line which is going into the wastewater, which we clean periodically with uh, uh, deionized uh, distilled water and with uh, weak acids to be able to remove any contaminants so we can measure trace metals down to the parts per trillion level without any uh, contamination issues. Okay, now I guess we the last final stop would be the outflow. That's uh, right. To the bay? We can actually take a walk and see the, see the outfall into the bay and I think there's a, a couple of people that are out there sampling in the bay from our facility. Oh, here. that'd be great, let's go. Okay, great. Okay, Dave, here we are at the outfall uh, where the uh, final effluent is reaching the Seekonk River. You can see the upwelling of the, of the discharge right there. The uh, tide is uh, high right now, and uh, in the background you may see a couple of our staff that have been out sampling here on the Seekonk River, monitoring for the same parameters that we test for up here in the wastewater uh, plant itself. Wow, that's great. So you put people on the river to test the, and sample the river too? Yeah, that's certainly right. Uh, that's, we work uh, to uh, basically try to understand the fate of the uh, pollutants, you know, that are in our final effluent. You know, this, we work, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to monitor this area and like we work with Rhode Island DEM also to be able to fully understand uh, and to make improvements in these water bodies. Well, that's great. Taylor and I appreciate all the work that we've done together right. in, uh, you know, taking the shoot here and uh, right. from everybody at uh, Check Your Fly. You guys are working around the clock. You that's know? right. Okay. Thank you, Dave, so much. And maybe we'll take a little trip in the boat and see what's going on, the monitoring uh, that they're doing on the bay. Okay, good. Right. Well, Thanks okay, again, Taylor. A, appreciate it. Okay, it's a bon voyage. <laughs> Well, we're out in the uh, Narragansett Bay Commission's uh, Zodiac, and we're going to do some sampling. And today we're with um, Tyler and Jay. Jay's the captain, and 
Kyla's the uh, engineer. The scientist. Scientist, that's great. <laughs> and uh, what do you have for us? This is a, a YSI deometer. It also measures conductivity and salinity and temperature. And uh, we usually pop it over the side like that. And uh, we measure, measure these, these parameters at different depths, at like half a meter depth, meter depth, and then usually try to do um, about a meter above the bottom. Okay, now we're in the Seekonk River here, mm -hmm. and it looks like we're just outside the channel, so how much? We're actually, I think we're kind of in the channel right now, we should be, we're pretty close. And uh, it's usually, it's about, we do have meters here, so it's probably about 20, 30 feet right here. Okay. Um, the DO probe doesn't go down quite that far, but we get an idea. During the uh, summer months, we get a lot of stratification, so the, the, the fresh water stays in the top, and the salty, more dense water stays in the bottom, so you can actually see that. When we, when we get it to work. So if we go about a meter down, um, we can see it if it comes up. When it comes up. <laughs> These always take a while. It's about six uh, parts per thousand here, so it's, that's pretty fresh. Okay. But if you go down, you can kind of watch it go down. This is about four meters down, so like 12, well, 15 feet down. And it's about 23 parts per thousand, which is almost seawater. Okay. So normal seawater is about 30. So we also test for dissolved oxygen, and it should be um, should be pretty high in the bottom right now. It's been it's been very we've had a lot of rain, and so therefore it's, it gets rejuvenated. Lots of water gets back into the water column. So it's about nine right now, okay. and that's that's about a normal range. Closer to the effluent, you might get a lower dissolved oxygen, longer than five or six. Okay. The lower the oxygen, the harder it is for the fish and animals to survive. And when it rains out, you have more oxygen. Yes, it, it gets it gets it with the, the, the turbulence, yes, right? The turbulence, okay. right? Right. And seawater generally is a little bit higher dissolved oxygen than fresh water. It all okay. kind of depends on also the algae, a lot of the photosynthesis going on. But since it's the winter, you have less photosynthesis anyway in this right. area. So. Well, that's great. Sharon, when you go over what we're uh, doing here? Sure, we're going to install a manhole sampler. What we do is go out weekly and install samplers up and downstream of major industries. So we'll be sampling for the same parameters that the industries in this area are permitted for. And the purpose of an upstream sample is to make sure that what we're getting is just from the industries in this location. So Carrie, what are we going to do here? We're going to install a manhole sampler. Okay. And here we're going to suspend it. Here and drop the line in into the main stream. Yeah, it looks like you there. got a pretty good flow going. Yeah, well this is the main interceptor that's taking in all the flow from um, from the Blackstone Valley side. Well, it's BVI, okay. Blackstone Valley Interceptor. Um, two major interceptors come into this. This takes all the flow from the, from the uh, other side of the river, comes down to the Seekonk Siphon, this, and then BVI continues all the way up from Cumberland. Okay. So this is all the flow with very little flow it's going to pick up between here and the plant. Okay. And the, the rest of the flow going into the plant is from the EPI side, okay. East Providence side. So how long will this battery last? This battery will last up to uh, two, three, maybe four days. Four days. Depending on how many okay. cycles it's going to run into. I gotcha. And this doesn't submerge down to the water, it hangs on the side of the manhole. It's in the middle of the manhole. In the middle of the manhole, okay. We want to get the center of the waste stream when we're sampling. Okay, you gotcha. This is the suction line, which will be adapted to here. And then this portion will go into the manhole. After that's done, recap it. Just check it to make sure that the hose isn't being kinked. Then we get the harness. <laughs> Now we were talking earlier before that you at least put out 10 of these. Every week. A week, 10 go out. And then the 10 that are out there come back in, is that what it is? Right. Or do you move them around, rotate them Oh, around? we move them around. They're in different locations every week. Okay. This is what suspends it. All right, that's great. 
right? Yep. So when we're ready to get it into the install. It's a great thing and a great system that you have here. Very simple system. Very. You know? And then after this gets done with its uh, schedule, then you'd bring this back and you'd test it at your facilities. Uh, your scientists would take a look at it, uh, your engineers. Right, well we'll collect this sample. When it's done sampling, we'll come back, collect it, um, put it into sample bottles for different parameters, and we operate our own lab. So we do all of our own analysis. Okay. Um, and these scientists and engineers will look at the data when it comes back. Okay. And then who do you have to report this to? Uh, we report this data to our pre-treatment program to Carrie and her staff. Okay. Um, and they use it in regulation of the industries that they regulate. Okay. Well, Sharon, I thank you very much. And to thank the you. whole tour of uh, the Narragansett Bay Commission and Carrie and, and Dennis and Taylor, and they've all done a great job today. And thank you very much from Check Your Fly and Matt and myself. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you spent with us in uh, helping to keep the bay nice and clean. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, I want to thank you guys, Taylor. All right, I appreciate it. Dave. Sharon, it was a great day here. Thank and you. Um, I had a lot of fun, learned a lot of different things. And uh, if anybody out in the viewing area, check your fly, uh, how would they get a hold of you and uh, maybe get a little bit more detailed information? Uh, do you have a website? or we, The Narragansett Bay Commission has a website, um, narrabay.com. And this summer, we're going to be having our buoy data real time on that website. And hopefully, in the very near future, we'll have information on the plant data and industrial data, all the things you saw us do today. OK. Sounds great. Yeah, that is uh, www.narrabay.com. All right. You guys have a great day, and thank All you right, very Jay. much. Thank you. Thank you for sure. Bye. Striper Marine, um, we're looking at some boats. Uh, he has a Lima boat here to show us. Um, also, um, he has a uh, Striper tournament here. And um, all the proceeds go to benefit the kids. So we'll talk to Al a little bit more about that. But uh, mm -hmm. he has it earlier in the spring, the end of May, the uh, beginning of June, when the fish uh, finally come in and settle down. They're still feeding on heron. Um, yeah, the heron's heron. still good. Yeah, we did pretty good this year in the heron rivers yeah. there. Yep. Yep. We had Jordan running up and down the rivers catching those bugs. Captain Jordan pretty soon. <laughs> but uh, so what do you what do you think about that tournament? I can't wait to hear how what the biggest fish was and yeah. who, who exactly who it benefits. But I can't wait to see those uh, Lima boats yeah, and take yeah. a look at those bad boys. Yeah, they ought to scream. All right, well we're gonna go see if we can find Al. He's probably up at the shop. What do you think? I hope so. All right. Let's go find him. All right. Ah, uh, here he is. Hey, hey, in uh, the office working. How are we doing, guys? Good. How you Good doing, Al? You. Hi, Al. How you doing? Good. Mike Gill. We're going to uh, walk on over, get you out of the office here for a little while. We were down on the docks looking for you. We want to talk about your marina here and definitely want to know all the information you can give us on your striper tournament, uh, the biggest fish, who caught that bad boy, <laughs> and who the tournament benefits. And I understand you have four or five Lima boats sitting over here. We'd like to take a look at them. Yes, we do. So maybe you can give us a run through on those. What do you yeah, think? Sounds great. All sounds right, my good. man. Yeah. Let's go take a look. Al, why don't you tell us about the, uh, your eighth annual striper tournament out of your marina here? Okay. The uh, striped bass tournament, eighth annual, that was held uh, May 31st, June 1, 2, and 3. Uh, was held uh, for the abused and abandoned children of Rhode Island. Over the years, um, you know, the, the proceeds that have uh, been given to the children 
um, go to provide stuff that the state does not provide. That's excellent. The kids benefit from us having fun. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So everybody's a winner in that one. I Biggest mean, fish this year. <laughs> Biggest a, fish. Uh, a monster? This, no, it wasn't a monster. In past years, uh, the biggest fish has been in the in the 30 pound mid 30s. Uh, this year we had some lousy weather on Saturday and half a Sunday. Biggest fish this year was 18 pounds three ounces, uh, caught by a gentleman down in Bristol. His name was Johnny Ryder. How many people actually enter the tournament? And how much does it cost? The in in the past years, the average we've had uh, all the way over 300 anglers wow. um, enter the tournament. The tournament uh, was a ten dollar fee. Um, this year we had 215 anglers. Um, now, do you have to meet down here every morning, or do you just come no. during the month of May or May and pay your uh, once, ten dollar fee? And once you're signed up and you paid your f entry fee, um, you can fish from shore, um, bridges, the uh, boat, fly fishing, whatever it may be. Uh, you don't have to meet here. The weigh-in station is here, so if you caught a fish, you need to bring the fish back I'll in here. Back here. Oh, that's fabulous that you're doing all this great work to help Excellent. these kids out, you know. And uh, I was talking to Mike, you know, we loved having our boat here and meeting the people on the dock, they were very nice. Uh, so what are the amenities that uh, people get when they, you know, come here and um, they're at Striper Marine to, you know, either dock their boat or they can pull their boat on and off the trailer here? We've got a lot of people that use the ramp on the weekends. Um, we'll do 30 or 40 boats on the ramp on a, on a busy weekend. Uh, we've got plenty of parking ramps uh, poured a couple years ago, so the ramp's in great shape. Um, we have a fuel dock at the end of the uh, marina. If you have a slip in the marina here, um, obviously it's a little easier access, come down, get on the boat and go. We have moorings that are available. Um, we have ice and we have uh, a little sort of snack bar that's over there. Um, ladies room, men's room, stuff like that. But uh, we have easy access on in and out on the ramp, uh, very safe. Uh. The thing I liked about it, Mike, we were so quick to our favorite fishing spots, you know, coming out of here. Yeah, just uh, as soon as you get out of the no wake zone, yep. a five minute run and we're on, we're on fish. And that uh, Striper 8th Annual Tournament that you had, it was a It'll be big success this year, huh? Success. Uh, we raised over $3,000 for the, uh, the abuse and abandoned children. Wow. It'll be the 9th Annual uh, tournament next year for them and uh, you know I'd like to thank all the people who uh, supported the tournament again especially Penn um, who's a big contributor there's too many to mention uh, Adam CMS guys from the Bristol County Striper Club who uh, major uh, support and uh, help uh, us out here at the marina so without the guys from the club uh, wouldn't be possible to well hopefully we can it was uh, 300 this year or 250 this year it was uh, just over 200 215 maybe we'll hopefully check your fly can double that what do you think Mike you know we can you give it a can... try all right we'll give we it like a try well, hopefully we can double it and get you more money appreciate and it we really appreciate the time and plus the dockage that you gave us here we really enjoy yep. being on the dock and being able to come in and wash the boat down yep come um, and go easy access for you so I think um we'll let L we're gonna let you get back to work I'm get, sorry get back to the grind <laughs> but uh thank you very much for your time thanks for the dock space no problem um, looking forward to jumping on this lean and giving this a cruise fishing off this bad boy anytime and for those of you who want to view or own a copy of this tape you want to look at pictures or get on our website contact us by email get any information you want it's www.checkyourfly.net and we'll see you out in there against the bay have fun fishing <laughs>